Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Um, so some of you guys may recognize me, and some of you may not. You may be asking, who is this person talking to me right now? Um, I actually went to Bridgeway Island, and I was a graduating eighth grade class of 2014. And I went to River City, and I was a graduating class of 2018. Um, now, the theme of today's talk is turning points, right? And robotics provided one of the biggest turning points in my own life. Um, I actually started robotics here, or Bridgeway, in seventh grade. Give it a second. Okay. In seventh grade, <laughs> um, I took a class you guys may know as programming. And in that class, at the end of each year, we go to UC Davis and we compete at these competitions called CSTEM competitions, and it was a robotics competition. And it was there that I fell in love with these machines and solving problems with them. And that passion eventually carried on into high school where I continued to take classes such as digital electronics, I took engineering pathways, coding classes, and I even continued the tradition of, taking, of competing at the CSTEM competition at UC Davis with my high school team. Now, it was actually sophomore year of high school, spring break, where my life had really changed. Um, it was then that I heard that Marvel was holding a competition. It was entitled Captain America, Girl, it was called uh, entitled Captain America Civil War Girls Reforming the Future Challenge. Um, and in there, um, they asked high school girls whether or not they could use STEM skills, such as science, technology, engineering, and math, to utilize them and use, create a solution to a global problem. And so my engineering teacher, Mr. Fagu, he was kind enough to let my best friend and I, my best friend and I, um, use the engineering lab over spring break. And for four days, we decided to just build a robot or a machine. And for those four days, we just, Okay, there we go, sorry about that. Okay, so for those day four days, we decided to build a machine to enter into this competition, and we were very nervous about it, but we decided to do it anyway. And so after we sent in our videos to Marvel after four days, we were anxious to get a call. And in robotics class, we actually did get a call, and they said, Maya, you're one of the top five finalists for this competition. And so I'm flown down to LA, and I have to present my project in front of four judges. I mean, seven judges, and I have to explain what my project is, and I have to say why I should be chosen as the grand prize winner. Well, I must have done a pretty good job because I ended up winning the grand prize in the end. And from there, I was invited onto local news stations. I was a part of talking for an organization called We at their We Day events in association with Microsoft, and I was even part of the 2018 class of Disney Dreamers Academy. So basically, <laughs> after that competition, I was invited onto this We Day organization. I spoke for them in association with Microsoft, and I was invited onto local news stations. I was part of the 2018 class of Disney Dreamers Academy. You guys should all apply when you're old enough. And it was really changed my life, and that's why I'm standing here before you today. Now, you may be asking me, well, you already guys know because you introduced it, but you may be asking, what was this robot that you built? Well, I called it the Seeing Eye Bot. What it was was a prototype, cost-effective. It was a replacement for the average guide dog for the visually impaired. Now, my robot's only one of many that we have in today's society. We have robots doing all kinds of tasks for us. We have robots doing jobs as simple as vacuuming our floors. We have robots building our cars. We even have robots exploring other planets for us. It's no doubt that this technology is changing the way that we live as we know it. We no longer have to scrub extra hard when we clean our floors. We now know that water used to be on Mars. We even carry a little piece of robot with us every single day. How many of you guys know about AI or artificial intelligence? All right, awesome, you guys are golden. So basically, if you don't know, AI is basically a program that's supposed to replicate human interaction and emotion. And we each carry one with us every day. You know her as Siri. Now, with all of this transformative technology, you have to stop and ask the question, where do we draw the line? Technology has been around for as long as we know. So, cavemen used stones to create blades. It used to take months for us to travel long distances, and now you can get to the other side of the world in less than a day. Tele television's only 100 years old, less than 100 years old. 
The first social media site was made in 1997. That's three years older than I am. I'm 19. Now, technology, it's just tools that we've been making to help our, our lives be a little bit easier. The only difference is today, technology is smart. It's beginning to think for itself. And already, technology and robots are doing jobs that are considered controversial. So one recent example is a doctor delivering bad news to a patient via a robotic system. He enters the room through a robotic monitor, almost like FaceTime, and he gives the patient bad news. And this is where people are saying, this is unethical. Isn't it part of the doctor's job to be there to console the patient in person? Maybe some things will always require human connection. Well, what about future uses of technology? Already today, we have robots making our food. They can build cars, as I've said. So it's not impossible to think that maybe one day, robots will be automated to make robots. They'll be able to innovate. They'll replace the workforce of creation. Are we becoming so dependent on these robots that we'll become part of it ourselves? Take, for example, Neil Harbison in 2004. This guy, he had an antenna surgically implanted into his skull. 2004. And now he can hear colors. I was four years old when that happened. I don't know if you guys were born yet, even when that happened. That was over a decade ago. Where will technology take us a decade from now? Will we be so intertwined with it that the understanding of what hu human connection is will change? These turning points may be closer than we realize, and maybe in order to avoid them, we need to stop and ask the question, just because we can, does that mean we should? I've told you guys about what AI is. It's been with us for a while. We have a little mini pocket version of us with every day. I'd like to introduce you guys to Norman. He's a psychopath AI. He was built by MIT, or the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, a very prestigious STEM college. And the reason they said that they built Norman was because they said, most people blame problematic AI on the algorithm that it's running on, rather than what the algorithm is fed. In Norman's case, it was the dark side of the social media site Reddit. And in order to compare Norman with standard AI, they had him caption ink blots. You know when those old fashioned like psychological ink blots, they show you like, what do you see? So they, yeah, those, yeah. <laughs> so he had the standard AI caption him and Norman caption him. And it's online if you're interested in looking at them, but his captions were very violent compared to standard AI, where it was like, oh, two people holding hands, and he would just have very violent thoughts. Now, it's understandable that MIT would want to showcase the culprit of faulty AI. However, the question of ethics arises. For one minute, I'd like to divert your attention to understand the phenomenon that is the uncanny valley. What the uncanny valley is, is basically it's a dipping point in which a humanoid or a computer-generated robot makes the viewer feel a little bit uneasy due to its near-identical human appearance. Have you, how many of you guys have seen like Sophia the Robot? She's a little creepy, right? Yeah, she's in the uncanny valley. You don't want to interact with her too much because you get the creeps. However, like a cute little robot like Wally, he misses the uncanny valley because he's not human-like at all, but he's still a robot. The reason that this is so important is because we're already bridging this gap. How many of you guys have been to Disneyland or Disney World? OK, good. So you guys know about the like animatronics they have on the rides or before the rides? All right, you know how they can talk to you. They have conversations. They know what you're looking like, what you're wearing, maybe your age. They move as smoothly and as fluidly as humans do already. Like, it's just a few character flaws that give away that they're not living creatures. And it's no question that this will advance in the future to a point where maybe we won't, we won't even realize that that's a robot or that's a human. So I bring back the question of Norman and the ethics behind him. Just because MIT could make this psychopathic AI, does that mean they should have? I mean, if this technology was blended in with a seamless humanoid in the future, there could be dangerous living robots living among us, and we wouldn't know it. Now, as I said, robots can be made to do any human task, and they can do that task in significantly less time. And if they can blend in with us, maybe they will be the future workforce. Maybe humans just won't work in the future. However, you guys, as a new generation, can change the route that technology is going in. I want to remind you guys that I said that my best friend and I entered the model competition together. 
We both built individual projects, but we decided to go in together because we were best friends and we did everything together. I'm pretty sure you guys can relate to that. Um, when she found out she didn't win, but I did, she dropped everything and was like, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you perfect this robot. She and the rest of my robotics team helped me perfect my robot, helped me perfect my presentation before I went th before those judges. It's because of them that I won that competition, no doubt. And they knew that I would mainly get the shine for this robot. They were going to be not as recognized, yet they still chose to help anyway. And it was this human connection that's irreplaceable. That human connection that we shared, those long days after school, the early mornings before school, is something that I still cherish till this day. How many of you guys have had like a really hard problem? You've been working on it for weeks. And when you guys finally get the problem solved, it feels pretty good, right? That's exactly the feeling that I had and that we had. And it was so much better because we shared it together. Now, this collaboration and this camaraderie is what makes us human. It's what reminds us that are, there are people out there that are going to help you, whether or not they're going to get recognized for it. And as our technology becomes ever advancing, and we're going to depend more on this co collaboration. I mean, humans are social creatures. And as the old saying goes, two heads are better than one. And it's my hope that we remember that this human interdependency is what got us this far. And it's what's going to take us further into the future to solve problems such as global warming, homelessness, world hunger. Now, there was a study done in Macedonia by their Department of Computer Science and Engineering. And it studied how well modern technology could read human emotion just the, through the way we talk. It wouldn't even have to see your face. It could just tell what you're feeling just through your tone. And it found that modern technology was actually 72% accurate with its reading. That's pretty close. So it's no doubt that the percentage is going to go up in the future. However, in their conclusion, they, they stated that this technology needs to be scrutinized in terms of ethics. And it needs to be introduced to humans very carefully. And we need to take this very seriously. Because not only is our connection with humans very important, but our connection with nature is important as well. I mean, one of the biggest criticisms I received after building my robot was that it's not a dog. People who are visually impaired, they don't have companionship. Although it could do many things that a guide dog could do, it couldn't provide what most people were looking for, a friendship. And although AI is getting closer and closer to replicating and reading our complex human emotions and signals without a flaw, will they ever be able to authentically replace authentic human emotion in our interaction with nature. It's no doubt that technology is becoming advanced at an ever-increasing pace. It's not going to stop. However, it's your job as a new generation, and it's my job as a new generation, to make sure that future technology is used for the good of all mankind and the world that we live in. And so long that you remember that human connection and emotion is what got us here in the first place, it's what's going to take us further. And so long as that you recognize that robots are just machines attempting to replicate what we have naturally. And so long as you realize that although we may be able to do something, it may not be what we should do. Humans will remain part of the future workforce. And robots, although they may be a great help to us, will just be another incredible feat achieved by mankind. Once again, I'm Maya Dua, and thank you for coming to my TEDx talk.